Seemingly in the last decade, Nebraska football has not been able to figure out the quarterback position. They've had a couple of solid players who've at times showed potential, but they've never had that guy who could take him over the top, win big games, and even just get to the NFL. It's been quite the drought for the Huskers, but that may finally change. Their new transfer quarterback has nearly 6,000 yards and 40 total touchdowns so far in his career, but more importantly, has extreme athleticism and potential to be the next great Nebraska quarterback. Matt Rule knows what he's doing, and today, we're gonna to talk about Jeff Sims. We're gonna go through his star-studded high school career, his crazy recruitment, talk about all the potential he showed at Georgia Tech, and why he could end up saving the Huskers. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you wanna to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about Jeff Sims. So going back in time, Jeff grew up loving football, and it started as a seven-year-old. He played with the Apaches in his Arlington Football League, and his dad said, quote, no matter what he was doing, I ain't going to say he had the proper technique, but you could tell he had a feel for it. He had a feel for anything he put in his hand that involved playing, especially as it involved physical play. It also helped that he had a connection to big-time football, as he is actually the nephew as former Jaguars receiver Mike Sims Walker. Not long after the family moved to Jacksonville, not long after they moved to Jacksonville, his dad started to play his son out to play football with the other kids in the neighborhood. His dad and all the other fathers would play quarterback, and the kids would play wide receiver or running back. His dad said, quote, Jeff used to take advantage of those kids. He used to take advantage of them so much that you knew he was going to be good at this. He was raised in a super hardworking and Christian family and had a rigorous upbringing and eventually got to play quarterback at the highest level of Florida high school football. He was always a work in progress. His coach said, quote, he was a tall skinny kid that was trying to play quarterback and you said, man, if he ever fills out, he'll be pretty dang good. As a freshman, he'd end up playing JV and got hit around a lot. His coach said, quote, he looked like a rail. He'd get hit in JV games as a freshman and come in screaming that he was dying. He said he couldn't breathe or that he broke his ribs or his collarbone and he'd say, man, you just got tackled. Sims went to Sandalwood High School in Jacksonville and became a starter as a sophomore, I believe. Before his junior year, he was nicknamed Moonbeam. This was because he was always in a happy mood and was always smiling. At the time, Sims was just your average three-star recruit and eventually decided to commit to Willie Taggart in Florida State. As a junior, he threw for 1,442 yards, 12 touchdowns, and five interceptions. He also ran for 212 more yards on the ground. Sims' recruitment seemed to move pretty quickly as he committed a week after he was initially offered. He said he was ready to play a huge role for Florida State and he was Taggart's first quarterback commit. Jeff said, quote, Taggart told me he wants me to be the alpha dog of this class and I'm trying to build this class up. I'm trying to get kids to join our family and the right people for our program. This was a dream come true for Jeff as apparently his coach said it was his dream school and that he was a knoll through and through. When he got offered a scholarship, he was ecstatic and shut down his recruitment after his commitment. As a senior at Sandalwood, Sims ran for 752 yards and nine touchdowns while throwing for 14 touchdowns and three picks. But eventually he decided to change things up. He said after much prayer and thought, he felt it was in his best interest to decommit from Florida State. He said Florida State would still be an option for him, but he was reopening his recruitment. His high school coach said that FSU wanted to go in a different direction and that you can't fault the Seminoles for it. It came because they dismissed head coach Willie Taggart and three days after Mike Norvell was hired. Did that mean that Mike Norvell didn't want Sims or did Sims not want to play for Norvell? That I don't know, but the next day, Jeff Collins drove down to Jacksonville to see Jeff, and this made a huge impact on the next stage of his recruitment. 18 days before Taggart's dismissal, Sims took a visit to Georgia Tech for their game against NC State, and at the time, he was still committed to Florida State without knowing who would be the next head coach. Jeff said, quote, Georgia Tech didn't ask us to be a commitment. They just wanted us to come in and check it out, and we had no intention of going to Georgia Tech. We took a chance and went to see the school. We had a great visit. Coach Collins did an awesome job, and it was something we didn't expect, and we came away from the visit thinking there was a strong possibility that Jeff could end up there. When the Yellow Jackets coaches met with Jeff, they laid out a specific vision for the program and planted a seed for a potential change of heart in his college destination. He still wanted to be a Knoll, and he actually gave Norvell a pretty good chance. He said his meeting with Norvell was not as negative as people put it, and that Norvell was a respectful, polite stand-up guy, but apparently Norvell doesn't like to play true freshman right away, and said he would play the best guy, and maybe that scared off Jeff. When it came time to finding another school, his coach put in calls to UCF and Penn State, but their scholarship allotments were already full, but Coach Collins came up the next day. Eventually, the writing was on the wall, and he decided to commit Georgia Tech over Maryland, Auburn, and Michigan. He started to catapult up recruiting boards, and was only behind Haynes King, Hudson Card, and Bryce Young, according to ESPN. This was the biggest QB signing in Georgia Tech history, 
as according to 24-7 Sports, he was a four-star recruit, the number 10 dual threat quarterback, and the 223rd best player in the class of 2020. So how would he end up doing in Atlanta? When Sims would arrive at Georgia Tech, there was immediate hype for him to start. He'd eventually beat out James Graham, Jordan Yates, and Tucker Gleason for the starting role, and would become the Jackets' first freshman quarterback to start a season opener since 2003, and the second to ever do it in program history. Ironically, his first start would come against Florida State, and he'd get a chance to make history early on. In that game, Sims would throw for 277 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, and ran for 64 yards. They beat the Knolls 16-13, and this was a big deal. He overcame two first-half interceptions, rallying them from a 10-point deficit to an upset win. His dad said, quote, I knew Jeff was going to be ready for it. I just wanted him to respect his position and the responsibility that was on his shoulders. I wasn't fearful of that moment being too big for him or that he'd be cocky. I just wanted him to keep his composure throughout the game. So how'd he end up doing from there? Well, he had two total touchdowns and a loss to UCF before his worst game of the year, where he had four interceptions and a loss to Syracuse. He would bounce back, though, as he had three combined touchdowns and a win over Louisville before he'd struggle against both Clemson and Notre Dame, who were just a lot better. The only other win for the remainder of the season would come against Duke, as in that matchup, he'd run for over 100 yards and pass for three touchdowns. He was limited against NC State, and then finished the year with three touchdowns and two picks against Pitt. All in all, it was a decent season, as he passed for 1,881 yards, 13 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions, with nearly 500 yards on the ground and six scores. Obviously, turnovers were a big problem, but Georgia Tech was in a tough spot. Going into 2021, he was once again named the starting quarterback, but Georgia Tech needed to start figuring some things out. Luckily, he had Jameer Gibbs as his running back, and he ended up getting hurt against Northern Illinois, and the team would lose. He would return just a couple weeks later to play against number 21 UNC, and in that matchup, they'd win 45 to 22, and he had four total touchdowns, three of which came on the ground. That was Jeff Sims' most impressive game, but he continued to play better. He threw for 359 yards and two touchdowns against Pitt, 297 yards and four touchdowns against Duke, and then over 300 yards and three touchdowns against Virginia, and then closed the season off with two losses against Virginia Tech and Miami. Sims was hurt for part of the year, so he didn't get a full season under his belt, but he did pass for 1,468 yards, 12 touchdowns, and seven picks. His touchdown interception ratio got a little bit better, and going into 2022, he once again really needed to play better. They'd start out the season with number four Clemson, and in that game, he struggled. He only threw for 164 yards with one touchdown and a pick, and they lost 41 to 10. He didn't play well against Western Carolina, struggled against Ole Miss, and also struggled against UCF. They had lost three out of those four games, and Jeff Collins was eventually fired. He was limited against Pitt before he'd have one final decent game for the rest of the year, which came against Duke. He threw for 227 yards and two touchdowns, and then played a little bit of garbage time against Virginia. Sims had a very disappointing year, as he only passed for 1,000 yards with five touchdowns and three picks. Sims had an up-and-down career at Georgia Tech. Rivals had a good way of putting it. They said, quote, he undoubtedly flashed his insane potential the past three years, but he was not put in the best situation to succeed at times. This caused him to make some inexperienced mistakes that can be fixed and can be corrected. Eventually, Sims decided to enter the transfer portal as Brent Key was likely going to go with his own guy. It seemed it would come down to Cincinnati and Nebraska for his talents, but Matt Rule and the Huskers won him over. Jeff said, quote, It was the rich tradition of Nebraska. I took my visit out there and it surprised me. It was very nice. I liked the coaches. I liked the vibe of the program, and it was just a good feel. Just talking with Coach Rule, I feel like they have a good plan, and they're excited about the future, and their main goal is to develop players that will lead to winning. At first, it looked like there was going to be six quarterbacks on the roster that he battled out with, but eventually Casey Thompson transferred, and Logan Smothers entered the portal as well. He'll probably battle it out with Chuba Purdy, but more than likely, Sims is the guy. And after his terrific spring game, it looks like that is going to be the case. Jeff Sims is a very athletic and mobile quarterback. He has a really good arm, has a lot of experience now, and fits the exact mold of what Matt Rule was trying to do. Adrian Martinez seemingly had the same tools, but didn't develop, and Casey Thompson was somewhat similar. And same with all the guys Nebraska has brought in. A lot of them had potential, but just never really got developed or coached properly. And it's up to Matt Rule and the staff to get the most out of Sims. He has NFL potential, but will he be able to put it all together this year? Honestly, I think there will be some growing pains, but I think Sims is going to have a pretty good season and help Nebraska make a bowl game. Right now, that's the first step in the right direction, and Husker fans just want to be playing in December. So I think Sims has the potential to do that, and he could also be a surprise player who could break out and become a big-time NFL draft prospect. Obviously, that's a little far-fetched, but Matt Rule said, quote, Jeff can throw it as well as anybody I've seen. I've been to all the pro days the last couple years, and he can throw it as well as anybody. Sims is ready to move on from the Georgia Tech era, put his mistakes behind him, and get ready for one last ride in Lincoln. I'm excited for him, 
and I think he can be the quarterback transfer that helps to save the program. But what do you guys think? If you're a Georgia Tech fan, what do you think of Jeff Sims? If you're a Nebraska fan, what do you think of this year's team and Sims? And what transfer quarterback or player should I take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about transfer quarterback Hudson Card. I hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace. Ooh.